I'm heavy weapons guy. And this is my weapon. It fires 0.25 gram BBs at 2,000 rounds per minute. Costs about 20 pounds to fire this weapon for two and a half minutes. Okay, now in all seriousness, welcome to Airsoft Pro Tips. Um, not joking though about this weapon, it does fire at around 2000 RPM and I will show you why in a second. Now, I said last video we'd be taking apart an AEG and here you go, we're going to be taking apart my support gun. Also known uh, as Pandora. And it's pretty simple. Uh, when we used to use radios, team radios, uh, team chatter, we didn't like to call this a support gun on team chatter for the simple reason that, simple reason being, lots of times I've held a flank using only this weapon and it caused a bit of fear in the enemy. And we like to use hit and run tactics. We like to appear, fire, and disappear again. And we nicknamed it Pandora simply because it meant on chatter we could say bring Pandora around, turn up with this, keep their heads down and at least for the majority of the time they had no idea what we were talking about. So hence why we've got that. The name just kind of stuck and then I ended up engraving it. So so there you go. Alright so the reason I'm going to pick this one is because it's the one I've taken apart the most out of any AEGIO. But before I start, a little bit of a warning, and I say this because it's a true story. Um, my very first AEG, I've mentioned many times before, Classic Army M16, I took it apart and I actually couldn't get it back together again. Now at the time, luckily near me, there was a local um, airsoft gun sh uh, store where I was, luckily got to know the guy who worked there and he fixed it for free. But some places will not fix it for free, some places will actually charge you for repairing your gun if you take it apart yourself. So do not take one of these guns apart unless you have every confidence that you can put it back together again. Because if you can't put it back together again, you can take it somewhere, they might charge you 20, 30, 40 pounds for their time and effort to put it back together for you. So with that said, let's begin. Now with these, they've got pretty much two major components, externals and internals. Nice and simple, right? So, first things first, let's get rid of some of the shrouding. And you can see this uses a large type battery. Now, essentially, there are two types of battery, large type and a small type. Give me a second. And like magic, the AK appears. And as you can see, for comparison purposes, this one runs on a small battery. And as you can see, I angle it so the bloody tripod's not in the way, bipod even. They are significantly smaller. Now, a couple of things about having a big battery, which is one of the reasons I converted this gun to be a big battery. Uh, longer battery life, and also you get a higher fire rate. Or at least I do, because I have lower voltage small batteries than I do high ba uh, large batteries. So with that, let's take this apart. So first thing I'm gonna do, is undo these retaining pins and get the barrel off. So, if this ends up looking a bit slow on the video, I'll probably just jump cut it. So do bear that in mind. So by the way, just off camera, I've got screwdrivers and we are gonna need these in this video. They're not there just for the sake of if something gets stuck like last time. And I've got a nice set of Allen keys. Now, most AEGs tend to use Allen keys and screws. Um, some, oh, come on, it's a little bit difficult because you have to pull this back while I'm doing this, um, this bolt right here, but um, most of them use fairly standard bits. Some of them do have rivets, things like my AK actually have rivets and it's a real pain to get them off because it means you've got to either re-rivet them back on or just, you know, have them then not riveted and you've got to replace it with a screw and bolt system and you know it's not worth doing but um, but like I say most of them are fairly user friendly. So now that we've undone those two retaining bolts this barrel should yeah pop right off. So here we've got the barrel now like we said before we were talking about the inner barrel and the outer barrel this section here is the outer barrel and in here 
we've got the inner bevel. Now you notice a little bit of black tape, that's simply because this has a shortened flash hider on the end and it's just to stop it, stop you seeing it on the end of the bevel really. Um, actually I'm going to pop that just one side out of the way. So this is the brass barrel and also we've got our hop up on the end. Now we'll talk a little bit later about how the hop up makes a difference and how the barrel makes a difference. So for the time being I'm just going to put that to one side. So now pop it back over. We're going to undo this bolt or this allen bolt here. And this one here. And with that, we will have freed the gearbox. So pop it from the top. And you'll probably be able to see this gearbox is now loose. But we've still got a, uh, this spring here holding it in. So we're going to grab our screwdriver. Oops, maybe next size. Yeah. And then do this and take out this little tiny spring. Now this spring has only one function and that is to put something behind the cocking handle which is now completely loose. Uh, that's all that does is actually has no working or no play in the actual operation of the gun. It's purely for aesthetic purposes. So now, ah, here we go. We can pop out the gearbox but I suspect I'm going to have to take this lower bit off as well to actually get it out fully. But that's fine. We have ways and means of doing just such that. And there it goes. So I've put that to one side. And as you can see, we've now got an empty shell. This is what our gearbox was housed in. So we're going to put that to one side as well. And here we have the gearbox. Now gearboxes are reasonably standard components wise, but this one has one single electronic switch at the bottom for firing because this support gun and most other support guns don't have any kind of selective fire. It's either you're firing or you're in safety slash not firing. And that's pretty much it, which is why it's got this one position switch. Now we'll talk about gearboxes more in a later episode and we'll actually talk about fire selection mechanism a little bit more. But um, for the time being, all you need to know is that switches, these kind of firing mechanisms are slightly different on an AEG or on a normal AEG, something like an M16, AK, whatever, whatever, uh, compared to this one. So let's get rid of this uh, masking tape. Masking tape is purely for the sake of holding the wires in place. And you can see what we've got here. Just put that to one side. Now, you may notice those of you who have ever actually taken apart an AEG before, my system has no fuse in. And that is for one particular reason in that I've got a Sistema high powered motor in here. Um, and basically even though I was putting in a 50 amp fuse, the amount of power it actually draws to turn over the, the high speed motor in the first instance, it would literally burn out over the course of about three or four games. So to alleviate that, I actually had to completely omit the fuse and I put in these slightly higher uh, higher voltage wires. Uh, not something I would recommend doing because if you do this and you emit the fuse, you actually run the risk of your gearbox, well, essentially catching fire. Um, so like I say, not recommended, but like I say, I'm just telling you for the for the sake of people asking me in the comments why mine doesn't have a fuse in and theirs does. So, something like this. Get that little bit of wiring out the way. We will undo this and this. Oops, not that one, that one. Now what we're undoing here is we're actually unscrewing the trigger or the switch. And that right here is the sum. Can I turn that down a bit? No, I have to move this up a bit. Is the sum of our electric wiring. We've got our battery which feeds into this switch, nice on and off switch, and that feeds to our motor contacts. And that is it. Now, like I say, on a full AEG, or sorry, on a normal AEG, on a normal assault rifle, this is a little bit more complex. But for the time being, that's pretty much all you need to know. 
So I stick that to one side. Now this gearbox has a little bit of a trick in that it's got a quickly interchangeable spring. So we're going to take the spring out now, we're going to put it to one side just because it's going to take the tension out of the gearbox and it's going to mean it's not going to spring open everywhere. Warning, your gearbox may spring open when you open it for the first time. So finally, let's get rid of the rest of these pins. Pins, screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. And let's get this thing open. Do, 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 do. Incidentally, this is the gun I've, like I said, I've um, done the most work on. I've spent quite a lot of money on it over the years, um, doing mods, um, gearbox mods, uh, barrel mods. The barrel that's on it now is its original barrel, but it did at one point have a long length barrel, which I took off because I was using a silencer to shroud the fact that the barrel was extended. And uh, it made the gun a bit long because it's already pretty heavy and with the extra length as well, it was just becoming a little bit too unwieldy. Especially when you consider when you've got a um, 2,000 odd round box mag on it, it was just a bit too, um, bit too heavy, a little bit too cumbersome. So I cut it all down, um, back to how it was before. So but I think after this one, there's one more. Yeah, make sure you don't lose any of your um, screws, any of your bolts. It's probably not a good thing. In the end of the day, they do have as many as they do for a reason. So it's really not good times if you lose one. So with that said, let's pop off the top. And here is our gearbox, all opened up. And there. Can you see that? Uh, that way. There you go. So components-wise, this is split up into several things. Now, just for the sake of reference, this here is where our spring would sit um, when it's under pressure, pop backwards and forwards. So as you can see, we've got three gears. We've got our actual motor, which is what's driving our mechanism. Now on a normal AEG, the actual motor will be down here, but it really doesn't make a difference because like I say, in later videos, I'm gonna be showing you some comparative gearboxes. So here's the piston. We've got our washers, our bushings, bearings even. We've got our actual cylinder, got the cylinder head, and we've got our air nozzle. We've got this, which is our plate, which pulls backwards and forwards and actually loads BBs in. And finally, we've got our three gears, which are actually what's doing the spinny bit of our gearbox. Now, let me just make sure we take these washers off so we don't lose them. You can see this is our the gear which is actually turning our gearbox over and you'll also notice that I've got a piston which has full metal teeth. Now I need that for this because the extra torque and the extra speed it's causing will actually shatter the teeth on the nylon piston. Uh, hence why I had to get a full, pe uh, a full metal one. Um, but essentially this runs along here, pulls it back and then when it gets to this bit where there are no teeth releases, it's under the pressure of the spring, pushes forward, goes bang, piston, pushes along in here, pushes the air out of the nozzle, and the nozzle is what's pushing your, pushing your BB down the bowel, similar to the gas blowbacks that we looked at last time. Now finally in here, we've got our motor, like I said, mine's a um, Sistema high speed gear, uh, uh, high speed gear, high speed motor and it's attached to these gears which are also high speed gears basically it just means the ratio is different and it, they turn slightly quicker but the flip side of having a slightly faster speed gear is you put more pressure on your gearbox but like I say we'll talk about that more in the next couple of episodes so like I say this motor turns this front gear that front gear Turns the middle gear, don't know if you can see that on camera, hopefully you can. Our middle gear is what's turning our end gear. And the end gear is what's putting back our piston, causing that to fire. Now also on this gear, we've got this little notch. 
Now the reason for the notch is our plate here sits in there like that and as this little notch comes round, it's going to be very very difficult to shoot this on camera uh, can you see that just there so as this comes round it pulls this arm back because this is going to be spinning uh, that way and like I say it pulls this bit back and this bit basically just goes backwards and forwards and what it's doing is in conjunction with this nozzle here this would be your hop up here it's pushing it backwards and forwards and actually pushing BB's into the hop up and thus into the barrel ready to fire and that ladies and gents is pretty much how the AEG is set up now like I said here we have our hop up now the hop ups are all pretty similar but the BB's are feeding in from the side on this one but they normally feed in from the bottom on most of them and they've got this little hole in the back so as BB's are feeding in through here this nozzle like I said before is pushing in that hole pushing them forward pushing them in and then airs going through and actually firing them out the barrel now like I said when I talked about the gas blowback pistols if you oh, sorry gas blowback weapons if you want to see one of these working the best thing to do is take apart your gearbox and actually see it in action or if someone's actually got one taken apart ask them but like I said at the very very beginning not worth doing if you don't know how to put it back together or you're unsure because if you take it apart and can't get it back together then then you're in trouble so over the course of the next few episodes we're going to be talking about how to modify an AG and we're going to be looking at parts individually so that's it for this episode and next time we're going to be looking at various modification parts.